Welcome to a step-by-step -step follow along sculpting session where we're going to go through uh, how to sculpt eyes, how I sculpt eyes. What I like to begin with is I like to begin with a UV sphere. Um, and then we also, of course, if you talk about eyes, we um, need eyeballs. So let's add everything that we need first and then we're going to go into sculpting. So the second thing that we need is eyeballs. And what we're going to use for eyeballs, of course, is a UV sphere. So we're going to set them aside. There you go. This one we're going to use later. We can make it smaller if you want, maybe like 0.5. There you go, set it aside. We don't need it right now. We're going to go into scope mode up here in this tab. Um, it should something look, look something like this for you. All you really need is this window where you can see um, what you're sculpting or, you know, the 3D view and then also the, the tools here on this side. Before we enable dynamic topology, we need to do one more thing because right now the topology is very, very weird for dynamic topology. When you enable dynamic topology, what happens is you can get you get this warning. Vertex data detected. Dynamic topology will not preserve vertex colors, UVs, or other custom data. This setting will always pop up if you enable or if you re-enable dynamic topology. To get rid of this, you can press Ctrl R, which retopologizes or re-meshes the sphere. And now if you press dynamic topology, you can just enable it and there are no weird uh, I guess pop-ups. And of course, as you've guessed, we're going to use dynamic topology for this. What I like to begin with for this is 20 resolution, the refine method subdivide collapse and the detailing constant detail. I think the standard is relative detail. If you switch it to constant detail, that's what I use. Relative detail is, I guess, dependent on how close you are to the scope, which is kind of, I guess, weird for me sometimes to to um, to sculpt because I want to have full control over the um, the resolution. So the first thing that we need is we need to create a head out of the sphere. Pretty simple, actually. We need to do two things. The first thing is we're going to grab the snake hook brush, which is down here, the yellow snake hook brush right there. We're going to look at the sphere from the front. And then we're going to go not into the middle. We're going to go a little bit to the side. Hold on before we do that. Actually, I forgot one more thing. If you go into the symmetry, we need to enable a mirror. So now that it's symmetrical, we can go here to the side, not right in the middle, but more a little bit on the side. We're going to select it and we're going to drag it down like this. You can see this somewhat resembles a face already. Perfect. The next thing is we're going to go to a sort of three quarter view. We're going to select what we just pulled down and somewhat on the side here. And then we're going to drag it to the side like this. There you go. And then we already have somewhat of a face shape. We have the lower jaw and we have the upper part of the head. It looks kind of weird right now. So let's do a few more adjustments here. We're going to drag the jaw here a little bit more into the middle like this. There you go. Just a little bit that we get this nice, you could say heart shape. This is the widest part. And then here is the pointy ending. Right now it's somewhat, if you look at from the top, you can see it's quite round all over. So what we need to do is we need to just grab another brush, which is called the move brush or grab brush, which is this one here. We're going to select it and then we're going to go here somewhere and we're going to move it into the middle just a little bit. We're going to move it just a little bit into the middle like this so that it looks more like this. The wide part of the head is in the back and it gets narrower as it gets to the front. And then we basically have a head already. The chin is quite far forward, so we're going to move it back a little bit. So now that we have the head, we can add the eyes. What we need to create first are the eye holes, and then we're going to add the eyes afterwards. Um, there are two rules when it comes to the eyes. The first rule is a good estimation where you want to, where you need to place it, um, I guess, vertically would be in the middle of the head. So if this would be the full length, we would place it probably somewhere over here. I guess the eye position vertically, I mean, horizontally comes a little bit later. We're going to use another brush, which is up here, which is called the clay strips brush, the standard brush that I use to deform the mesh. We're going to hold control so that we can, I guess, remove volume or work subtractively. And then we're going to create two holes here in the middle. We're going to do this. There you go. Small little ovals. They can sort of point down a little bit. There you go. Doesn't have to be too deep. They're just the eye holes. We're going to fill them afterwards anyway. What we need now need to do is we need to grab the grab brush again and we're going to go to the side view so we can see everything from the side 90 degrees basically we're going to grab the inner part of the eye holes basically where they sort of connect and then we're going to grab it and we're going to move it backwards like this 
There's one more thing we need to do with the grab brush, which is we're going to go to the side again and we're going to move the outer ring or the outer, I guess you could say, edge a little bit backwards too. Like this. There you go. It seems like the, the head is quite wide, so I want to just make it a little bit slimmer. What we're going to do is we're going to just go to the side again here, to this side. We're going to keep the grab brush and we're going to move it a little bit more into the middle. Not too much, just a little bit to make the head a little bit thinner. There you go. Perfect. It already looks like eyes, but of course those are just the eye holes. Just adding the eyes would look kind of weird, so we're going to add a few more things. Basically the, the features around the eyes, because that's what makes the eyes look like eyes. We're going to begin with the cheekbone. Don't worry, it's very, very simple. We're going to grab the crease brush again, or the clay strips brush again. We're going to go here into the, um, I guess, lower left quarter of the circle right here, right there. We're going to hold control to remove volume and we're going to do this. There you go. So that this small edge here remains. And then we already have somewhat of a cheekbone right here. There you go. Of course, we can still refine it a little bit. We can make it a little bit smoother here if you want to make it add some volume here. Um, but you don't really necessarily need to do that. If you want to, we can also remove some of the volume here to make it kind of, I guess, even it out. There you go. There's one more part, one more part that I want to add, or two parts, let's say. The first one is the are the eyebrows. They're actually pretty simple to scope. We're going to here in the going to go here to the um, forehead into the middle between the eyes. We're going to create a trapezius. We're going to begin here and we're just going to create a small volume that looks like this. There you go. Just a little bit like this. So it looks like this from the side. Then we're going to go to the side here and um, we're going to create a triangle on the side. So we're going to begin from the side edge here of the eye and we're going to create a triangle that looks like this. So it goes to the middle to the trapezius, somewhat higher, just a very little bit higher and then to the side of the eye basically here. It joins the sort of edge here. So though that's the edge of the eye brow. And then we need uh, a few more things here and there. We're going to add a, a line that goes from the triangle upwards to the back of the head, which looks like this, which basically evens out this, this small edge here, the, the eyebrow. And then there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to flatten what is right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to still keep the clay strips brush and we're just going to use the brush while holding control and just kind of even out the side here. Not too much, very, very lightly like this. There you go. And we already have a pretty good looking skull. If you want to, you can smooth everything with the clay strips brush enabled. If you hold shift, you can just um, either, you know, just brush it or you can tap it so that the smoothing is a little bit lighter and you can smooth everything if you want. I'm going to do it. There you go. To add the eyes, we're going to go back to the layout tab because we need to bring the eyeball into the face. Then we're going to select the eyeball. We're going to go to the modifier tab. We're going to go to the array modifier. We're going to select the array modifier. And then we're going to set the count to seven. The general rule is for males, seven is a good size. For females, it can be like seven or six and a half too. Uh, but setting it to seven is good for, for both. We then go into orthographic view. If you press one on your numpad, if you don't have a numpad, you can go to view, viewpoint right here. And then you select front. We need to now use these seven eyes and make them as wide as the head is because seven eyes equal the width of the head. So we're going to select the eyes. We're going to move it on the head and we're going to scale them down until they basically touch both ends of the skull, the widest part of the skull too. So not just any part of the skull, not down here, not up there, the widest part of the skull, which should be somewhere above or on the eye brow level. We're going to move it to the edge here. And that looks pretty good. This would be like a male eyeball size, for example, because oftentimes females have smaller heads. You can also say for females, you could, for example, scale it up so that six and a half eyeballs is the width um, of the head, basically. But we're going to use seven so that they perfectly fit into the skull like this. So now that we have the size of the eyeball, we can go out of orthographic view just by rotating it, rotating the camera, for example. We're going to move the eyeballs out of the head. And then we're going to remove the array modifier. I want to add a mil milk, a uh, <laughs> mirror modifier. 
So we're going to go back to the modifier section and we're going to use the mirror modifier, which is this one here. As the mirror object, we're going to select the skull. And as you can see, now we have two eyeballs which mirror on the skull, on the skull axis, I guess you could say. Next up is we're going to, I guess, bring the eyeballs into the eye socket. You can, if you want, go into the front view again by pressing one on your numpad or going into view, viewpoint, front. You move the eyeball over here. There you go. The eyeball can be closer to the upper edge than the lower edge. So what I want to do is I want to move it a little bit higher and maybe it's a little bit too high. There you go. Another thing that I want to do is look at the distance between the two eyeballs. Um, it can be 1.25, it can be 1.5. I think it can even be like two eyeballs distance between them. Maybe they can be a little bit wider apart. So we're going to move it a little bit further out. I think that's a pretty good position from this angle. And now we can go to the, go back out of this orthographic view. And we need to place them in the eye, eye hole itself. So we're going to grab the eyeball with G, press Y, and then we can move it on the Y axis forward until it reaches the eyeball, I mean the eye hole. If you look from the side and here's the end of the cheekbone, I guess the beginning of the sphere or the outer edge of the sphere looking from this angle can be on the same height. Let's go back into the sculpt and finish the, the eyes themselves. So we're going to select the, um, the sphere again, the skull. We're going to go back to sculpting. Um, I like to have the eye, eyeballs being in the middle of the eye holes. Right now on the left side there is some more room so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move the right side a little bit further out. I think that's pretty good. And another thing that I want to do, because the forehead is quite flat right now, is I'm going to go somewhere over here, a little bit higher. You can maybe even go to the side too. Grab, or I'm going to use the grab brush for this. I'm going to go to the um, forehead and move them forward a little bit, just so that they that the forehead is a little bit rounder, as you can see now. There you go. You can see a small bump here because of the trapezius. If you want, you can also smooth that out by holding shift and just applying the brush. I'm going to save real quick. We're going to select the clay strips brush again. So this one is very helpful to just increase the strength to one. And then we're going to go basically behind the eyeball in circular motion. We're going to add more volume. We're not going to hold control. We're just going to use, we're going to just apply the, the brush like this. There you go. One more thing to note, it can be that if you apply it, that you don't get as much volume as I get. The setting that can help with that is if you go to the advanced settings, there's a setting that is called accumulate. Usually it has a cap how much you can add to your sculpt. So that's the cap. It doesn't matter how much I brush over the same spot. But if you enable accumulate, it just adds more and more and more volume to the sculpt. Very, very, very useful in my opinion. So I always have it enabled. So now what we're going to do is we're going to envelop the eyeball basically. We're going to just do this until we completely en envelop the eyeball. Like this. There you go. Perfect. We have fully covered the eyeball. We're going to add a little bit of um, volume here on the side, right here. Just a little bit. And then on this side too. Um, we're going to use another tool, a new tool, which is called the crease brush, which is right here. We can make it quite strong, maybe like 0 0.5. 0 0.5 should be good for this. I guess now we're going to create the eye shape. So we're going to just apply it. And as you can see, when you apply it, it's going to remove volume and it's going to show the eyeball itself again. So if we just apply it now, you can see if we do it more and more and more, you can see, hey, there's the eyeball again. So now we can create the eye lid shape. So we're going to just now create an eyelid shape. Of course, we have quite a low vertice count, so it's a little bit blocky, but we're just kind of try to recreate this. As you can see, it's somewhat of like an oval, I mean, an almond shape. Um, what you can do to make it easier on yourself is you can focus on, I guess, this shape first without the tear duct, and then you can add the tear duct later. If you want to draw on this, so it looks something like this. And then afterwards, you can still add the tear duct like this. That's what I usually do. You know, we're going to use the crease brush without holding control. We're just going to do it like this. Add a little bit like a small hole here. It can be quite rough. We can still adjust it later. Like this, there you go. If it's still too weak for you, you can also just increase the, um, the strength even more. So maybe 2.8, for example. There you go. Looks very rough right now, I know. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to hold control while using the the crease brush and we're going to just go over the edges of the eye basically and as you can see now we can sharpen the edges around the eye you can see the resolution is quite low so it can be quite finicky sometimes you can maybe you need to kind of switch between using holding control and not holding control to, to just kind of um refine the edge here you can see it can be quite <laughs> annoying sometimes but that's okay we can refine it soon do the same at the bottom here okay what i really want to do here with this is just to kind of i guess establish a shape what we can do now is we can use the grab brush again and we can shape it a little bit more so we can now just use that one to just kind of reshape it however we want we can move it up a little bit for example to just kind of get to the shape that we want it which is something like this there you go so it looks pretty rough but that's okay what i want to do now is i want to add well what is missing up here and down here which is basically just fat we're going to grab the clay strips brush again and we're just going to add some more volume here again there you go we can make it weaker if you want to just be a little bit more careful here and we also just we just want to fill this up basically uh, we go to the edge here of the the cheekbone and we just fill this hole basically we don't want to smooth the eye lid too much we just want to create a nice smooth plane underneath it like this there you go and now we filled the the hole underneath the eyeball the upper part is a little bit different with the upper part uh, we need to add more to the right side than the left side because the left side can be quite deep so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the right side we're going to fill it up basically like this we're going to fill it up like this until we have a shape that looks somewhat like this looking from the side here for example and then we're going to go into the middle but it's going to sort of taper off so this part here is filled a lot and the more we go to the left side the less we fill it i guess you could say so it looks something like this we can maybe add a little bit more here so it looks like this in the end to uh, make this a little bit smoother i guess we can hold shift while using the the clay strips brush and then we can just kind of tab on the edges here to make those a little bit smoother there's one more thing that we can do here we can smooth this edge here too to make it nice and smooth like this perfect um, now we can get to refining the eyeball uh, we're just going to increase the resolution to 50 and what i usually do is i keep 20 resolution before until i basically in I created all the parts of the face but of course because we only sculpt the eyes uh, i would go ahead and start with 50 right now the easiest way to just add more resolution is by using a brush that is called simplify which is this one here if you press shift z though you can see the x-ray view if you then press alt z you can see the x-ray view without seeing through the mesh and now if you use the simplify brush the simplify brush basically applies this resolution without changing the volume so if we now apply this you can see we add more geometry around the eye there you go so what we want to do now is we want to go back to the solid view and then if we use the smooth brush you can see everything gets a little bit smoother we can switch back to the clay strips brush up here and we just smooth it a little bit there you go until everything is nice and smooth i just tap it because that's um it doesn't apply the smooth brush as strong then and we have everything nice and smooth so now we get to refining the edges basically so we switch from the clay strips brush to the crease brush it's quite strong for me right now so we can turn down the strength maybe to like 0.3 and then we're just gonna Go over the edge, make it nice and smooth. Until we have something like this. The eyelids are quite thick, you know. So we can make, you know, they can be like this thick, for example, maybe a little bit thinner. Using the smooth brush, to basically just holding shift, enables you to use the smooth brush with most of the tools. Um, and this way you can very easily just make it a little bit thinner if we need to. We're going to do the same on the lower eye lid. Like this. There you go. Just make it nice and even and then we can also create the tear duct like this just create this ending here this u shape and then smooth around the edges to make the transition to the edge nice and smooth and then it seems like the uh, tear duct is quite deep right now so we're just going to switch back to the clay strip brush this one up here and we're just going to fill it up a little bit more 
If you want to, what you could do is you could use the grab brush again to adjust a few, I guess, proportions here. Like the tear duct, maybe we can make it a little bit smaller by just pushing it into the middle like this. We can also maybe move the corner of the eye a little bit further backwards like this if we wanted to. But it's, that is more personal, I guess, you know, personal in the sense is that, of course, you're not going to create the exact same sculpt as I did here. So maybe you, if you, you want to adjust it, maybe you don't. One more thing that I want to do is we, I want to add this fold right here. So to add this fold, we're going to go back to the crease brush. It's on strength. Let's set it to 0.5 maybe. Then we're going to create the crease right here. Going over the eye, basically parallel to the corner of the eye lid here. And just creating the crease right here. There you go. To make the, I guess, edge here a little bit smoother, what we can do is we can hold shift again, just tap it to make the edge a little bit smoother. There you go. And that basically completes the eye.